Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian. In today's video, we'll be going over how to prove something by induction. This is a viewer requested lesson. I always appreciate viewer requests, so be sure to leave your requests down in the comments. Let's get into it. So we'll begin with an analogy explaining why and how a proof by induction works. So let's suppose we're setting up a string of dominoes and we want to be able to knock over the first domino and have that cause the rest of the dominoes to fall over. Then there are two things that we need to ensure. The first thing we need to ensure is that we can knock over this first domino. So if we're setting up the dominoes, we're not going to put this domino out of reach, like up on some high shelf that we can't access. We're not going to do that. And we're also not going to do something crazy like, say, screwing the first domino into the floor. We need to make sure that we can knock the first domino over. So let's say we do that. We manage to ensure that we can knock the first domino over. Then the second thing we need to ensure when we're trying to set up a string of dominoes to knock them all over by knocking over the first one, the second thing we need to ensure is that if a domino falls over, like say this one here, we need to ensure that that will make the next domino fall over. Obviously, if one domino falls over and doesn't force the next one to fall over, then our string of dominoes has come to a stop and we're not going to be able to knock them all down. Once we've ensured those two things, we've ensured that we can knock over the whole string of dominoes by knocking over the first one. So if we knock over this first domino here, then we'll also knock over the second domino, because like we said, we ensured that if a domino falls, it knocks over the next one. But if the second domino falls, then it will have to knock over the third domino because it knocks over the next one. If the third domino falls over, it'll have to knock over the fourth domino, and so on until they've all fallen over and you've just got a string of fallen over dominoes. That's how induction works. That's how a proof by induction works, except instead of dominoes, it's a proposition about an infinite set of numbers. In particular, it's usually a proposition about the natural numbers, these ones right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. Sometimes zero might also be in there, and sometimes it might not be about this set of numbers. But when you're doing a proof by induction, these are the usual suspects. So we're proving a proposition about an infinite set of numbers that's usually this set, and will certainly be this set for your first few induction proofs. So with that said, let's get into an example induction proof. So the proposition that we're going to prove by induction is that the sum of the first n natural numbers is equal to n multiplied by n plus 1 divided by 2. So if you add 1 plus 2 plus 3, etc., all the way up to n, you're going to get n times n plus 1 over 2. This is a formula we're going to prove. And if you're familiar with summation notation, we can write this sum like this. The sum from i equals 0 to i equals n of i. And if you're not familiar with summation notation, you should check it out because it's really cool. You can see how we can turn this nasty sum into this cute little expression. So summation notation, really cool. But I'm going to set that aside so that we have some more room to write out the proof. So for starters, let's define our variable. We'll let n be a natural number. Then we get in to the real first step of an induction proof. And thinking back to the analogy, remember that was ensuring that we could knock down the first domino. And in the same way, when we go to do the proof, the first step is showing that this proposition is true for the first possible value of n, which is n equals 1. And we call this first step of the induction proof the basis step, or the base case, it's sometimes called. So now, we'll let n equal 1, because again, we're addressing the very first case of the proposition, which is when n equals 1. And in this basis step, we want to show that the proposition is true when n is equal to 1. So for starters, we look at the sum in question, 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n is just equal to 1, because n equals 1, so we stop right there at the 1. So when n equals 1, our sum is just 1. And remember, we want to show that the sum is equal to this expression, n times n plus 1, all divided by 2. So let me write that expression down here, n 
times n plus 1 divided by 2. Now we can substitute 1 in to n because n is equal to 1 in this basis step. So we can say that this is equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to 1 times 2 divided by 2. Those 2's will cancel out. You'll be left with 1. So then indeed, by the transitive property of equality, our sum is equal to 1. This expression is equal to 1. Thus, our sum and the expression we wanted it to be equal to are indeed equal when n is equal to 1. And now we're done the basis step. And I'll mention that it's very normal in an induction proof for the basis step to be very easy and very trivial. So this is not the hard part. So now I've moved to a new page, so we have room for the next part of the proof. And the second step is the really cool one, and that is the induction step. And this is where we see the cleverness of induction really come into play. Now remember, in the analogy, the second step of setting up the dominoes was to make sure that if one domino falls down, it will force the next domino to fall down. And that is exactly what the induction step is all about. We assume that our proposition is true for some value of n. And then we show that that forces the proposition to be true for n plus 1. But it's generally considered good form to use a different variable in the induction step than what we used in the proposition. So what we'll do is suppose that our proposition is true for some natural number k. So we'll say that 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to k is equal to k times k plus 1 all divided by 2 for some k that's an element of the natural numbers. And again, the reason that we're assuming our proposition is true for some value is because we're trying to show that if it's true for one value, it has to be true for the next value. Just like with the dominoes, if we knock over one, we want to show that the next one also gets knocked over. Some people will often confuse the induction step with assuming our conclusion. But I want to make it very clear that that's not what we're doing. Because in the basis step, we proved that a proposition was true for n equals 1. So we've already proven that it's true for some value. So it's not at all a problem to assume it's true for some value. In fact, we know it's true for some value. But in the induction step, we give that value a name and we call it k. So getting back into the action, we started off the induction step by assuming our proposition is true for some value k. And that's how you begin your induction step. Then what we have to do is take this information to prove that our proposition is true for k plus 1. So now let's get into that. Let's write out the sum that's part of our proposition, but let's write it up to k plus 1. So we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to k, and then of course we're going up to k plus 1. So this is the sum of the first k plus 1 natural numbers. And using our assumption up here, we want to show that this sum is equal to this expression, except with a k plus 1 in place of the n. So how do we do that? Well, first, we need some substitution, because we already have an expression that this sum is equal to. We already know that 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to k is equal to k times k plus 1 divided by 2. So let's do some substitution. So now we have that the sum of the first k plus 1 natural numbers is equal to k times k plus 1 all divided by 2 plus k plus 1. Now, in order to get a common denominator in this sum, we're going to multiply k plus 1 by 2 over 2. So it's just a funny way of multiplying by 1 so that we can more easily add it to this fraction. So now we have k times k plus 1 divided by 2 plus 2 times k plus 1 all divided by 2. And now that these two fractions have the same denominator, we can write the sum as one fraction. So we have that this is equal to k times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1 all divided by 2. And now I'm going to delete this sum here 
and then move this one up just so we have a little bit more room for the final equality. So now what do you notice about this fraction here? In particular, what do you notice about the numerator? Well, what I'm seeing is that this number, k times k plus one, and this number, two times k plus one, have a k plus one factor in common. And you know what that means? We're going to factor out a k plus one. Now let's see what we've got in the numerator. So then factoring out that k plus one, we have the k plus one, of course, because we factored it out, and then what's it multiplied by? Well, what would we have to multiply it by to get this expression here? We'd have to multiply it by k plus two. And you can quickly verify that if you go through the distributive property. If you multiplied these two sums back out, you would have k times k plus one, which we have here, and then you would have two times k plus one, which you've got there. So we know that checks out all right. And of course, this is all divided by two. And here we are, this is the goal destination. Do you see it? We wanted to prove that this expression up here in the top left is true for a value of k plus one. And if you substitute k plus one into the n values in this expression, you get k plus one right there, multiplied by k plus one plus one, which is k plus two, divided by two. What does that look like? It looks exactly like this expression here. We've got k plus one, which is the n value, multiplied by k plus two, which is k plus one plus one, that's the n value, plus one, and of course, all divided by two, just like we have up in our expression. And remember that this expression here came from this whole sum, the sum of the first k plus one natural numbers. So what we've just proven is that we took we took this sum of the first k plus one natural numbers and showed that it is equal to this expression here. And this expression is equal to this expression up here, but with the value of k plus one substituted into the n values. Isn't that crazy? And that is the induction step. We assumed that our proposition was true for some value k. And then we use this information to prove that it forces the proposition to be true for k plus one. And we finish that by getting this expression down here, which like I said, came from this sum. Now getting a blank page to just more clearly write out what we just proved, we proved that if one plus two plus three all the way up to k is equal to that expression that we have in our original proposition. So if the sum of the first k natural numbers is equal to this expression, then we just proved that one plus two plus three all the way up to k plus one is equal to this expression as well, but with a k plus one instead of a k. So we have k plus one multiplied by k plus one plus one divided by two. And of course, this part here is where we got this k plus two from here in the uh, bottom of the page in the numerator. So then with this whole mess of work, the induction step plus this less messy piece of work, the basis step, we have proven our proposition for all natural numbers because we showed the proposition is true for the first natural number. That's what we did in the basis step. And then in the induction step, we showed that if it's true for some natural number, then it has to be true for the next natural number. Thus, we get the whole string of dominoes to fall down. We've proven that the proposition is true for all natural numbers from the first one to the next one to the next one to the next one, on and on and on. It's always true for natural numbers. And that is how an induction proof works. And once you get comfortable with it and really understand how it works, it really is a clever proof technique but I hope you were able to follow that proof along and to test your understanding, try out this practice exercise. Try proving this proposition, which I've also written with the summation notation, if you prefer that. Try proving this proposition using induction. And I think you should be fine doing it. It's a very, very similar proof to the one we just did. It really follows the same sort of way. So maybe you could watch the video again and follow along if you're having any difficulties. But again, proving this proposition which is the same as this proposition, is a very similar proof to what we just went through. Of course, it's an induction proof. And uh, just to be clear, in these propositions, n is an element of the natural numbers. So it's one, two, three, four, and so on. 
So give it a go proving this. You can let me know how it goes down in the comments. Ask me any questions if you need anything clarified. And I will also do a video later um, just going through the solution of proving this proposition. And again, it's really the same sort of stuff as what we just went over. It's really similar. But in any event, I hope this video helped you understand what induction is, how it works, and how to prove something by induction. And of course, this proof video is just about how to prove it, not necessarily how to write the proof. A mathematical proof should be very well written, and you should take your time to make sure your thoughts are communicated very clearly. And um, the, scra the scratch work that we did here is certainly not how you would write out um, a real proof. But we did go through how to prove it, just not how to write the proof. In any event, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can't wait for my